Warm greetings, Africa. Today, we celebrate 1st November Revolution, a day that resonates deep in the Algerian history. That day marked the beginning of the Algerian struggle for the War of Liberation. That day was the beginning of a flame that burned throughout all the land of Algeria. And we have a special guest joining us today, Mr. Nordin Judi, a prominent Algerian diplomat. And also, he's a young witness to this revolution that reshaped the Algerian future. Mr. Nordin also served as the first representative to the FLN's office at London, and also he was an ambassador in South Africa. He played a major role in many and different liberation, liberation, I say, movements across Africa. And today he joins us to reflect on the revolution's impact and how its values still resonate in Algeria, Africa, and beyond. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Judy. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me because traditionally we hear the voice of uh, Algeria through either Arabic or French. And we forget the fact that a lot of countries which are friendly countries, particularly in Africa, are English speaking uh, countries. So it is it is a positive point to to their native in English. That's my first first uh, comment. Thank you. Thank you. And to delve right into our interview, I'm going to ask you my first question. Mr. Judy, the yes, Mr. Judy, could you please take us back to November 1st, 1954? Could you take us how did you first hear about the start of the Algerian revolution and what was the atmosphere like in Algeria among the Algerians at the time? Well, look, first of all, on the 1st of November 1954, I was a young kid then. I was very young and uh, a young boy. And uh, what happened on the 1st of November was something uh, very, we were very enthusiastic because we have been, I'm sorry, perhaps I'm confusing a little bit things, but I was a young man uh, on the 1st of November because I wanted to say that we were motivated deeply after the 8th of May, 1945, when this absolutely cruel assassinations in, um, in Galma, in Slif, in Kharata, which really, as kids, as young kids, we discovered suddenly yes. that we, were, we had no uh, supposed identity. We were crushed by the French. We were supposed to, to speak only in French. We were supposed not to speak about Algeria. So that the first, the first of, uh, the 8th of May 1954 was absolutely the, the real start of the revolution because it, it has been the incentive. And because of that, that particular date, uh, we started and on the same month, on the same month, and before, the, uh, before we started, the French colonial army was humiliated and defeated by Vietnam in, in Dien Bien Phu. Yes. So that we, it, we took it as a sort of revenge, 10 years after revenge on, on, our, on uh, what happened to us. And immediately, of course, as a, as a child, as children, we received, uh, we were living, I was living at that time abroad, outside of Algeria, and a militant of the PPA, the Algerian People's Party, uh, came to tell us about these massacres, and he came with photographs and so forth, and he organized us as young scouts, the, uh, Algerian, uh, the, the Mos- Algerian Muslim scouts. So I remember as a, well, I was about 11 when we first started singing patriotic songs or sometimes songs to remember what happened in, uh, in, his, in Gel Mastiff and so forth. Nadani Masari, Ajib Tunida, Masari called me, I answered to the call. Or, or we, uh, 
we are yearning, we are, we are, we are mourning, mourning the uh, sacrifices of the, the women and the children of Ganma, of, of Sitif. You see, the, these were, for the first time, we went on a clandestine move outside the city in a, in a forest where for the first time we raised the, the flag, the Algerian flag. So it impressed, it impressed us. And that was, I believe, this was the beginning of our, of our militant action. Not actually in the struggle, but at least we were already uh, politically, politically aware of what we were, that we were not French, that we have a long history uh, which France had uh, uh, tried to, to wipe off, and that it was the moment for us to, to, to see how to regain our, uh, our identity. Because, you see, what the French did was to get the uh, public opinion, generally speaking, to think that after the uh, Berlin Conference, that France established a protectorate on Morocco, because they said Morocco had a sultan. Yeah. On Tunisia, because they said they had a bay. And they tried to say Algeria was terra nullus, that there was nothing in Algeria, that they have, they have shaped Algeria. Mm -hmm. And later on, uh, the, the late President Boumediene, who as a child in Gelma saw what happened. Mm -hmm. So it motivated him. And finally, when the French said that Algeria was creation of France, he said that Yogurta was died in prison in Rome when France did not exist yet. So this is something we try to... Uh, the whole of the Algerian people, all across all the country, were shocked by, by the news. And even, even more, after that, uh, there were massacres everywhere around, the, around the, our country, from north to south. And this is perhaps the, the opportunity for me to, to say that this crime that France has committed was not something isolated. You see, they have been saying in Europe that uh, for the first time, uh, chemical weapons were used during First World War II. It was called hyperit. Uh, but the reality, which they never worked to talk about, is on the f 4th of December, 1,852. In other words, 22 years after they set foot for the first time in Algeria. In, in 1852, the French colonials used chemical weapons in La Guat, in the south, south of Algeria, a weapon called uh, la, le chloroform purifié, which ate you know, the flesh and killed because you could not, you could not breathe anymore. And they were terrible massacres. Mm -hmm. And mo more than that, mm -hmm. it was the first time in the history of uh, humanity mm -hmm. that they used uh, human uh, segregation. Mm -hmm. They started killing young boys so that they would uh, eliminate any possibility for the Algerian to reproduce. Mm -hmm. but, the, but our women did something fantastic. They put, uh, they put all the young boys who were disguised as young girls. And oh. to make it even more credible, they gave him an, a year earring, ear ring, which is known now all over the, our national territory as la yasha, which uh, oh. gave, gives life. So you see how 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 eighth of May is something which impressed us and and was the, the uh, starting point mm -hmm. of the uh, organization of the final struggle on the first from uh, as a fifty war. Indeed, and you have mentioned Boumedien. I'm, there are many other leaders that played a major role during this liberation movement. And uh, this revelation had, like I said, many key leaders from the military strategists to, to political figures. Uh, can you share your thoughts on the roles that these figures played in shaping the legacy uh, they left for, uh, let's say, the future generation of Algeria? I talked uh, about Boumediene simply because uh, <clears throat> I was involved recently in, uh, in something about, uh, about um, mm -hmm. Palestine and uh, Southern Sahara, mm -hmm. Western Sahara. And that's why uh, I remembered how my former commander-in-chief in the army was the Colonel Boumediene. That's why I quoted him. But in reality, mm -hmm. 
the, 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 the list is very long. The people who started the, the struggle, mm -hmm. first there was a meeting of 22 mm -hmm. leaders who met in a villa in Algiers, and there they decided that the political parties, and we had many political parties, uh, the MTL, PPA, MTL, the, uh, what's that, what do you call them, the, the ULEMA, the Communist Party, and so forth, and there was no success whatsoever. Mm -hmm. The answer of the French was simply brutality. So they said that this is time to have the, the last, the final struggle. Mm -hmm. Either we win or we die. Mm -hmm. And that group of 22 created a group of 12 mm -hmm. in which we had, uh, for instance, we had uh, uh, Karim al Qasim and so forth, who were, who were instructed to organize the struggle as quickly as possible. And we set up the date of the 1st of November. And of course, we cannot, I cannot cite all the leaders because it will be, uh, it, not, it will not be uh, acceptable that you should forget anyone. Mm -hmm. But I can, I can say, for instance, the, the great leader of the revolution was uh, Al-Arbi bin Mahdi. We can, we can speak about Abar Ramdan, we can speak about Omran, we can speak of uh, many, many, many leaders because most of them died in, uh, in, uh, in combat. Yes. Now, with respect to why I quoted Boumediene, but in fact what happened was uh, Al-Harbi bin Khair, mm -hmm. who is from the eastern part of Algeria, mm -hmm. he founded the fifth wilaya mm -hmm. in the west. And Boumediene was his assistant. When Harbi bin Mahdi decided to come and organize the resistance here in the capital, mm -hmm. he gave, he passed on the commandment mm -hmm. to Boumediene, who in turn, when we created the uh, general staff uh, of the uh, Liberation Army, because we had relays were independent, we had to coordinate in one single body, mm -hmm. the, the headquarters. He was, he was nominated to be the chief, and he had, therefore, to, to leave, uh, to go outside Algeria, and then organize uh, this staff on the borders of Morocco and Tunisia, mm -hmm. and left the command to the late Colonel Lotri, who died in combat, mm -hmm. and which Colonel Lotri, la, 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 in turn, left it for, for the last colonel uh, and, uh, before independence. So the list, the list is very long, uh, and you can see the names in the streets of, uh, of Algiers, Every, everyone, everyone will remind you of those who thought fought for this country. And they shall live forever. Of they course, shall live forever. of course. But you I mean, have played also an important role in, sorry? you have played an important role in supporting African liberation movements after having played a very major role in the uh, National Liberation Movement Front. And also you were the person in charge of uh, Nelson Mandela, and you took him in, you guided him, and you were his companion during his visit to the battlefield. In what ways did the Algerian Revolution inspire or influence other countries and leaders such as Nelson Mandela in Africa that were fighting for independence? First of all, let me get things straight. Mm -hmm. I'm not a hero. I did not play a major role. I was someone who joined the Liberation Army, like thousands of others, and because of having been uh, uh, trained in, uh, in some of the highest universities, then after the period where we had to combat, mm -hmm. I was appointed as a, a military commi uh, political commissar, mm -hmm. because my, our role was first to combat the French propaganda system. Secondly, we had to see how to help the refugees. We had 200,000 people who ran, flee, flee from, uh, the, from the combat, and they were refugees all along the border, Morocco and Tunisia. So it was also our role, on, not only to find solutions for the condition, mm -hmm. but also to continue informing them. Thirdly, we also, in, a, in my, my office, we had, to, we had to tell the world what our struggle was. And this is how, for instance, we had some friends of Algeria, like the late uh, Mustafa Al-Almani. We call him Mustafa Al-Almani, but in fact, his real name 
is a <clears throat> Wilfried, his name is Wilfried, and he was Austrian by nationality, and he was uh, an anti-fascist in the struggle uh, in his own country, and he joined us, and he did a fantastic uh, role playing through the radio, which we are uh, the, the voice of Algeria, and through, to, uh, through him, a lot of German-speaking members of the Foreign Legion ran away from the Foreign Legion and came to us, and we managed to get them through and send them back to their country, people from Germany, from, uh, from Austria, and so forth. And the later, uh, and we call them Mustafa al-Almani because our people don't make the difference between Germany and Austria. They both spoke, uh, uh, spoke um, uh, German. So um, Mustafa, uh, Wilfried Kalei was his real name. Uh, Mustafa had his, has his rec recognition as Mujahid mm -hmm. because he was in fact a Mujahid with us. And he stayed after independence he had in his nationality here, and he did a fantastic job, particularly in organizing in, in the, you know, uh, forest prevent the protection of anim animals and forests and so forth. First in Kabylia and then in Tamaras, where he died. Mm -hmm. So you see, the the Algerian Revolution had a fantastic impact impact on the uh, on, on the foreign people. Yes. We'll yes. come back. We'll come it. We'll come yeah. back. To. <laughs> And Mr. Judy, as so, someone... Just, just to finish, because okay. as I insist on this, okay. please do not call me, do not say that I played a major role in... Uh, no, no, I played my role as Mujahid, except one thing perhaps, mm -hmm. is that some people don't know, that starting from 1958-59, we were in, in a food battle, we started training Africans from sub saharan sub saharan Africa, yeah, so, south, south, south of Mali, so the first one were from Angola. We trained them as freedom fighters, and we were still fighting. Can you mention some of the nations you trained in Africa, beside Angola, of course? No, we, we trained, uh, I trained personally a number of people, but I can remember a few names. For instance, uh, Mandela came to see us in, uh, in February 1962, when mm -hmm. we were still struggling. Mm -hmm. And I just so happened that because of security, security measures, we could not call on an interpreter from outside. Yes. And it was my commanding officer who told them, I have in, the, in my uh, political commissariat a young man who is a professional in English and mm -hmm. who has uh, been trained to be a professor of English. So uh, this is how they co I came to, to com uh, begin interpreting Mm -hmm. between Nelson Mandela and, uh, and the other friend who came with him, Robert Recha, and the late uh, Si Jamel, Shibl Hassan, who was a member of the general staff, and the restrictions of, uh, of, of the president. And uh, so that I got acquainted with uh, Madiba. Then I had my instructions from chief of staff to go and take him to see for himself the reality of the fighting, and we were along the border, the uh, Moroccan-Algerian border, and he saw mm -hmm. how, you know, our people were trying to move through and how we were bombed. And uh, that day, we got a T-6 uh, plane and a bomb, uh, b uh, who came to bomb us. We called it, we called it Safra because of its uh, color. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it came to stra strafe, you know, to, to, to kill. And I, I had to protect Mandela not to be in the area you could see from far, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I kept him away from danger. And from there, I took him to, to a training camp, one of our training camps. And there was something important is that he visited several countries. Mm -hmm. And then he said, Algeria is the only country which has the same kind of, uh, of setup as South Africa. And you even have a form of apartheid, what we call the, uh, uh, what is it called? The, the, uh, I forgot the name of the document or the law, the French law, which made us second-hand uh, citizens, not even citizens. Yes. The Europeans were citizens, French citizens. 
We were not French citizen. Le code de l'indigénat. We were indigenous, which meant, you know, not too far from bit, uh, animals, you know. A little bit human on two legs, but not citizens. And that, Mandela noted it, mm -hmm. that we had this code de l'indigénat, which is a form of apartheid. Indeed. Where we, where we are, the Club des Pins, mm -hmm. just to, 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 uh, to, to belong to, to one settler. Mm -hmm. And there was a big sign. Mm -hmm. On that sign, it was clearly written, strictly forbidden for Arabs and dogs. Strictement interdit pour les Arabes et les chiens. You see what, what kind of people we were. Yes, they so that when, 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 when they imposed French on us, mm -hmm. We turned it into a weapon. We said we are going to be best than them in, in speaking French so that we can show them that we can be better than them. Yes. Mr. Judy, as someone who lived through that period of time, what was the most profound lesson you have learned <coughs> then on your personal career and your personal life as well? I'm, I'm tempted to say that uh, <coughs> the most important things I learned them in the Liberation Army. Because you see, I, was, I, came, I came with my diplomas, my knowledge of English, not only the language, mm -hmm. but the mentality of the British, the way they think, the way mm -hmm. they, And when I was in London, in fact, I, had, uh, I was supported by three MPs, mm -hmm. Fenner Brockway, Antonio Chubin, and Mrs. Uh, Barbara Castle, who helped me a lot. So we, my job was particularly, you know, to, to educate them into what was really our struggle. Mm -hmm. So that, okay, I came as a, as a scholar coming from university. But in the army, in the Liberation Army, mm -hmm. this is the time we, we were mixed with people, with Algerians, from all possible uh, sides. Mm -hmm. Doctors, uh, physicians, or simple herds, people, people who who, who watch, who watch uh, uh, the, their, their herd, you know, of uh, sheep and cows and so forth. So th there is this fantastic cocktail where there was no difference between the rich and the poor or the one who was educated and the one who was not. So that it was a melting pot which made all Algerians thinking in the même way towards the same objective, that we were Algerians, we are proud of being the heirs of a fantastic civilization, Indeed. not only not only at the time of new, new media, but even when we got the uh, Islamic uh, uh, religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, France, for instance, when they speak of uh, the dialogue between uh, between uh, Christianity and uh, and the Hebrew, mm -hmm. they forget that the first who started the dialogue between Islam and another uh, religion were the Arabs of Spain. Andalus Andalusia. Andalusia. They were the first who address the Christians to say, let's talk about our religion. We both, we both observe one God, but perhaps di differently. Indeed. You, have, you say that you have crucified Jesus. We say no. In our case, Jesus, which we call Isa, mm -hmm. was not crucified because he was too holy. So you see, this kind, and, and what the Arabs brought also, mm -hmm. was the, uh, it was the source of uh, civilization in terms of mathematics, in terms of uh, uh, medicine, and even, even, some people don't know that, even on uh, science, uh, sciences of astro uh, astronomy. Yes. Astronomy, the, uh, the Arabs discovered a lot about astronomy, which is basis now today and I'll, I'll go even, uh, I'll, I'll come later perhaps to it if we can, uh, yes. which show you how, how our civilization, our, on which our, 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 our um, personality is built, mm -hmm. is, uh, of course. is the beginning of civilization, of in fact. Of course it is. And uh, Mr. Judy, I'm going to ask you my last question of the day. As today marks the... Uh, 70th anniversary of the Algerian Revolution, what would you say is the best way for Algerians to honor this significant milestone in our history, especially to our young ones, to the young generation of Algerians that will be shaping the future of Algeria? Well, look, uh, 
I'm not in the government to, say, to tell the government what they should do, but you can see already how, you know, since President Abun has been elected, yes. the fantastic changes which came to what we call now the new Algeria. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are changes, fundamental changes in terms of the rights of the people, in terms of uh, how we build up our trade, how we build up our commerce. For instance, we used to bring everything from outside. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the president uh, decided that why should we what, why should we import when we can make things ourselves? Mm -hmm. Even even you can see, for instance, at the level of Ministry of Defense, mm -hmm. we are building our own our own weapons today. The drones, since it's uh, the big big. Uh, Jeff Big thing the today, the drones are very, very, yes. uh, very yes. important for uh, in the wars. Mm -hmm. the, drains, the drones in Algeria are listed by specialists as being among the 10 top manufacturing uh, of uh, drones. So you see, we, we have the vast clearly. But the main thing to which uh, my, my mission of the, of the International Association is to keep, to see to it that the principles on which the revolution was based should stay for eternity. Because the difference, the difference between our revolution mm -hmm. and, for instance, since we speak of France, the revolution of uh, 1789 in France or the November revolution in the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. our revolution is very specific. Mm -hmm. If we compare, in France, the revolution was the revolution of people who were fed up of being hungry and seeing the, the hard, you know, the, the, the absolute hand of the king and of the church. So it was a revolt of the people against their king and their church. Mm -hmm. The Algerian revolution came on the basis of some fundamental um, um, uh, some of the ideals or, or ideas which are of, uh, uh, universal. For instance, if you, if you read the documents, the first documents, the appeal to the revolution and the platform of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, La, La Soumam, mm. you will find, for instance, that we, we speak of the freedom and dignity to all people. We did not think only about f liberating our own house. We wanted all people to be, to be, uh, Liberated. to benefit from. Yes. We introduce the idea of, um, how would you call it, uh, some, uh, when, when we capture prisoners, for instance, we, uh, the French is to, to execute people. Mm -hmm. We treated the prisoner in the same way as we treated our own house. That is, it was based on human, humanitarian principles. And this is why we got so many friends, because they saw us not only as, as freedom fighters, they saw us also on people who had ideals which belong to the old man kind. And Indeed. this is why we say that we want to pers perpetuate it. This, these ideas, which are noble ideas, which we inherited from the revolution. And we, we have to keep it alive. And we want specifically that our youth be informed about this kind of thing all, the worst, all over the world. Mm -hmm. Because when we were fighting already, we were saying that the greatest richness of Algeria is its youth. La plus grande richesse de, richesse de l'Algérie, c'est sa jeunesse. And when Mandela came to see us, mm -hmm. he looked at us and he said, but all of you are, are kids. I told him, yes, we are very young, but we follow the example and the advice of our elders. There is no break in between. And from Ben Bella, at the beginning of 62, up to Tabun today, Every head of state in Algeria has followed the same principle. We have never, never departed from it, especially for our friends in, uh, in, uh, in Africa. Yes, yes. Thank you, Mr. Judy. Thank you for sharing your invaluable insights with us today. And it's evident that the values of the November 1st revolution resonate until today in Algeria, in its young people, like in our elders, it always resonates and it always pulses with the fire of freedom and liberation and to protect the identity of our land. And 
not only in the memories of those who lived through it, but also in the hearts of the next generation. This anniversary is a chance to all of us to reflect on our honor and remember the sacrifices made for this nation, for Algeria's independence. Thank you once again for joining us. Let me just add one thing about the youth. Yes. We are the only country in the world who has a high higher council of youth, which has its office at the president's office. Indeed, indeed. This, this does not exist in other countries, which means the importance we give to youth. And we want the youth to never, never forget. I always say that if I have been ambassador, instead of, of watching of uh, goats, mm -hmm. I am an ambassador because that million and a half million people who sacrificed their lives for us to become ambassadors and ministers and what have you. Indeed, indeed. I mean, this Thank should you. never be forgotten. Of course, I agree. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Judy, once again. And to our listeners everywhere, thank you for tuning in. Let's all take a moment this November 1st to honor the bravery and the vision that gave birth to our nation's freedom. المجد والخلود لشهدائنا الأبرار. Glory and eternity to our righteous martyrs. Africa, 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 Africa,